Welcome to Top 10 Steps of IT Project Management Tutorial, where you will learn how to lead a project and provide professional IT service. If you work in IT field, there is a really good chance that a project will present itself in which you will be placed in charge, regardless to your position within the company. Step number one. What is the project and its deadline? In order for us to start planning our project, we need to know some basic information. Is it software deployment? Is it hardware deployment? Is it application development? Or is it related to something entirely new? We also need to know about the deadline to finish this project. Knowing this information can directly impact not only the outcome, but the flow of this project. Make sure you gather all information available before proceeding any further. Step number two. We need to find out who and what is impacted by this project. Which groups? Which location? Which users and how many? We can figure this out by looking at the hours of operation for your company. If, for example, we are deploying a new application, we need to choose an appropriate time frame that would have the least amount of production impact. So, if we can install the new application in the evening hours, there would be no immediate production impact because these are not business hours. But keep in mind that the following day issues may arise and cause major production impact, but this is discussed in further steps of this video. Step number three. How to implement this project? Based off information acquired in first two steps, we need to come up with the least impacting method of testing and deploying our project. In order to accomplish this successfully, carefully look at the hours of operation. This will dictate if or when to test a new application or hardware and when is the best time to deploy. At this point, it is also important to know the hours of operation for your own department if anyone else is assisting you with this project, also of third party that may be participating. Step number four, who's going to be on our team? We need to figure out who is going to participate in this project. Figure out if your whole department is going to work on this project or just a few people. Typically, we can't have everyone participate on a same project because it could be a production impact for day-to-day -day work, but you can assign workload based off team member expert expertise. For example, some of your team members may be better at certain things than others. Are any third parties involved? Third parties meaning anyone else involved that is not part of your team. Who is the point of contact for the end user? Speak with department managers that are affected directly with this project. Step number five. Communicate project plan with your team and users affected. The entire information gathered so far is to be outlined, explained to our technical team. At the same time, end users are to be contacted with upcoming changes or deployments. There are two ways of doing this. You can ask department managers to convey this information to users or reach out to users yourself. This will vary based off type of business environment you work in. Step number six, spread the workload amongst project IT members to minimize production impact. Begin development or implementation. If there are multiple parts of this project that need to be accomplished simultaneously, you need to divide the workload based off each member's expertise. Some members will be better at doing certain aspects in IT than others and vice versa. This will ensure the timely accomplishment of the project by utilizing the workforce optimally. Step number seven. Acquire users for testing and initiate testing phase. 
this is by far the most important part of this project because we need to make sure that project is going according to plan. For example, is the application working correctly? Is this hardware functioning properly? Are there any issues associated with this project? The testing results can not only halt the project immensely, but can also entirely stop it. You can acquire testers by reaching out to end users. Keep in mind, in some cases, you cannot even start a project without having done experimental testing that can be presented as proof of succession to your superiors. Step number eight. Remediate any issues and start troubleshooting. Any issues that become apparent during testing, we need to resolve immediately. The majority of project issues can be remediated by yourself or your department, but sometimes we need to have a third party assist depending on what the issue may be. For example, if you encounter a firewall issue between two locations, a person with access to open a firewall may need to be contacted or if it's an application developed by a third party. Step number nine, set a deployment or implementation time, then go full speed. Once we know everything's working properly, we have done all our testing and there are no issues whatsoever. We can proceed to deploy to all our users at full speed. Keep in mind that this part still has to be coordinated with end users in order to minimize production impact. Step number 10, finish your project and follow up with end users. As the last step, it is incredibly important that all aspect of the project is 100% complete. Follow up with end users to make sure no part of deployment was overlooked. Once we are sure of this, we can report to our superiors. Friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope it helps you succeed in IT world and related field where project management is a plus. I would like to thank everyone that is supporting this channel and knows the value of good real world experience. Also, thank you all for donating towards the development of this channel. If you don't mind, please go to facebook.com forward slash Kobuman and like my page. I'd really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, my friends. Good luck.